Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the RPG Maker VX Ace Tutorial Season 2. This is Episode 2, and uh, it is 2.30 in the morning for me. Anyways, today I'm going to be explaining the database. You can press F9 to enter it, but I'm just going to click this little icon right here. Alright, so in the database, you have a bunch of tabs, which I'll be explaining. The Actors tab is where you can create actors, uh, which are characters that are playable or being like able to be added into the party. Now, if you want to change the amount, you can by clicking here. Uh, this basically what this is is what's called an array. Basically, um, all these actors I believe are held in like one variable, but uh, it's an array, so you can access like different sections of that variable, and it'd be a different value. So you can have however many you want. I think up to let's see. Okay, up to 999, <laughs> which is a buttload of actors. So, you can probably have more than that if you, some for some unknown reason, would like want to. Like, if you had a game where every enemy you battled may have a chance of being an actor, which would be incredibly insane, that's how you would do that. And if you would need more than 99, you would just, well, if you'd know how to do that, then you'd most likely be good at script editing, so, there. Alright, so, <laughs> you see in, ah, in the general settings, you have the name, you have the nickname, which is basically like, say like what he like his background like uh, if he's if he's um, hmm, a warrior or, or like a shinobi or something you would do that like what is he like um, let's say he's, he's a person who does magic okay uh, let's see where's it where's it where's it where's it where there she is let's say it's a person who does magic you would name it like magic swag no you would name a magician or you would do black mage mage you do all kinds of stuff like that so that's basically where the nickname comes in. I'm gonna cancel that real quick, so I can get all, all this back to normal. All right. So yeah, that's the name of the character, and then the nickname, which you can change all these throughout three events too. So, so the, here's the class. Um, basically, the classes are like what the character is. Like this character would be a soldier, therefore he would specialize in attack more than he would other things. Um, you got monk, and not as you can see down here. Here's the skills. But I'll go over that in a second. But this is basically what the classes are. You can change it. You can decide the character's class, like what his attacks will be and what his stats will be, um, and how long it'll take to level up. Okay, so, so okay, right here you have the initial level. This is where the character, what level the character actually starts on. Uh, you can usually do one because that's what like normally everybody does. But if you know how in Pokemon, when you first get your first Pokemans, it's level five. You can you can do something similar like that. The max level you can't go beyond 99 unless you do script editing. Like I remember this one time I actually edited this boss and the final boss of a game that I was developing which never got finished had I think it was 20 or 25 million HP, and he would do like tens of thousands, even a hundred thousand or something damage to you. So you would have to have at least one million HP yourself. That would have been an amazing game if I would have finished. I wish I would have went through with it. Okay, the description is what shows up in the status. You can say, like, just a little bit about your character. You can't go beyond that. See? You can, but it's just, like, it starts going off screen. So I recommend just kind of sticking to basic stuff. Like, you don't, like, write a huge monologue about your character. Unless, of course, you know what you're doing in the script editor. But, yeah, we'll get to that in the future. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on. To, okay. The features. This is where you can basically, like, give your characters weaknesses or strengths against certain attacks. Um, say, like, if you had, like, this big tank character, he would be, he would take half damage from physical. Physical is, like, wait. Yeah, you only do, wait, that's not what I'm gonna write, I'm sorry. Okay, I just kind of confused myself. Let me go ahead and explain this again. Okay. Basically, you can give your character some debuffs, stat rates. You got state resist, where he can actually resist the state. Uh, if he resists death, he's practically immortal. <laughs> he can't die. Um, you can give them perimeters. Next perimeters. Like, you can increase, like, yeah. You can increase the hit rate, evasion rate, uh, the critical rate. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, critical evasion, I think. Magic evasion, 
MRF, I have no idea what that is. I know I never use these. Um so I have no idea what these are. Special perimeter. I also have no idea what these are because I never use them. And over here you can give him some you can give him and like every one of his attacks can have a certain element. Uh, attack state. Like like if he if he attacks somebody, he can instant kill them or instant sleep, confuse or whatever. And that's what that is. Okay, magic reflect. Fire force. Okay, that's what those were in the back there. Attack speed, you can give him, he can, he can attack like an insane amount of times, like nine times. I wonder if he can do 99. Wait, no, not no. No, okay. You can attack a max of nine times. You also have skills. Uh, you can add a skill type. Like, if you don't want that class to have magic, but you just want this one character to be able to use magic, even though he's the same class, that's how you would do that. Skill seal type, uh, meaning like he can't use a certain skill, even if he is a certain class. Basically, it's the same thing. If you don't want that one character to have something, but you want all the other classes to have it, or even though he's the same class, or they're the same class, that's how you do that. Add skill. You can, you can add a certain skill. Even though that class doesn't have it, he can begin with it anyways. Seal skill, that's the same thing. as a seal skill type. You just won't have it. Even though other classes or characters of the same class will. Weapon, again, just like the skills, you can you can have the character able to equip certain weapons, armors, or you can have uh, it fixed where he can't change it. You can you can seal the weapon type, which means you're not able to equip that type. And you can also have dual wield if you need to. So he can have like two swords. Uh, action times, 100%, you can do special flag auto battle, where it's an artificial intelligence uh, helping you battle. Guard, which I believe increases your defense. I don't know what substitute does or preserve TP. I'm guessing preserve TP, like, automatic, like it lessens, uh, or it increases the amount of TP you get, maybe. Collapse effect, boss, instant, or not disappear. Um, you got party ability you can encounter half no encounters cancel surprise attacks which basically like you know when when the enemy strikes first raise primitive that means you that means uh, you have a higher chance of actually like getting a surprise attack on the enemy where you go first gold doubles where you double the gold and you, uh, I don't know, drop item doubles where you double the items drop I'm gonna cancel that because I'm not gonna add anything. No, no, no. Now the notes. Um, normally you would be all like, "Hey, I have no idea what this is for. I'm not gonna use this. I'm not gonna. Leave. I'm just gonna leave it blank." But if you're a script, if you know about script editing, um, in the script editor you can actually access these notes and use them to target or to access or to activate some kind of script function. So say if I want him to be a like uh, a person who would constantly like regain the whole party's HP or something, you know, you would write a script for that, and to access that, you would just be like, on, swagger, or something like that, and I don't know, not literally swagger, but that's how it would go. Alright, right here you have the character's graphic, uh, I, I showed myself kind of doing this earlier, but I never actually, like, went through it. This is where you can choose your characters. These are called sprites, or sprite sheets. Um, sprite sheets are a batch of characters, uh, that face down, left, right, and up. Um, down in the order you see here. So that's pretty much how sprite sheets work. And as you can tell, you have different kinds. And now if you see here with the uh, the dollar sign, the dollar sign means like a fixed thing. Basically, I, think, I believe it can be any size. Um, yeah. I think, no, okay, never mind, I'm sorry. I, I got confused with something. Okay, the dollar sign means it's like this basically you have one one set instead of a bunch of different sets I, I apologize for that one I got confused for a second so okay the dollar sign as you can tell makes it to where you only have one set the explanation mark I believe makes it like slightly I don't know I forget what the explanation mark does to it I don't know if it changes the order or no, maybe it's the explanation mark that actually changes the size of the sprites. Or actually allows you to have any size. I think that's how it goes. I could be wrong. Anyways, I forget what the explanation mark does, but... Yeah. 
So those are your sprite sheets. You can you can you can literally choose to play as a switch if you wanted to. <laughs> That'd be very random. I'll go back to default. This is your face set. These are just like sprite sheets, except well, they're not like different directions and angles and all that. You have just the face. And I believe it's 90. No, it could. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's 128 pixels by 128. The size of the faces. That's per section. So you got to do that times four and then times two for the height. You're going to make your own. Or you can just like make 128 by 128, leave the rest blank. All right. So there, that's the, um, basis of this and now you have the starting equipment this is what your character starts with normally you would only be able to select your um, what whatever your class is able to uh, equip or in this case we can equip an axe as you can see over here I'll go over the classes here in a moment however if you go to the features and uh, you do where is it, where is it? Uh, okay yeah do sword for example he can equip swords you would now be able to select swords because this character, even though he's this class, and this class can't handle swords, this character can. No other character except him unless you do this. So, Or unless you change it in the class where you can equip a sword. Or I'm going to go with bow for this case. So I can show you. And now we can also equip bows. So that's basically how that goes. You got the shield as well. You got your head, your head accessories and you got all your casual, like, body a <laughs> red casual you got all your body equipment and stuff like that and you also have your accessories um yeah so that about does it actually for this episode i can't believe i was actually able to spend an entire episode on the actors tab alone so i'll see you guys next time um for the classes <laughs> thank you all for watching